Today we're going to talk by myself, just me, Schnickerman here, and I'm going to deep dive into a game that I've had a lot of history with over the years, which is RuneScape. And the reason I kind of wanted to talk about RuneScape is because I'm almost 30 years old now, and one thing I've had in my life for a good portion of that time is playing RuneScape. So we're going to start with kind of what got me into RuneScape and the history of it and then I'll kind of progress into some kind of like deeper things in my life that I think all correlate back to me playing RuneScape. So I think my friend Matt in middle school was the first one that originally told me about RuneScape. There used to be a lot of different websites that had you know compilations of different games, mostly flash games. Um, I'm kind of blanking on some of them at the moment. I know originally, or later down the line, a website named Congregate came out, which kind of aggregated different Flash games in one website. But anyway, back in the day, I'd always see RuneScape. Um, there was also Adventure Quest, but I think Adventure Quest you needed to pay to get most of the content, so I played that a little bit with my friend Matt. But some of us kind of just started playing RuneScape, and was kind of my first experience with an online game and especially like an MMO related type game. I just remember at the time thinking about the game and, and realizing that this was a game that you could log into, your friends could log into from wherever they were, and as long as you were on the same world you could interact with each other. Um, I think the first time I ever played I think I was on Tutorial Island and I think it just didn't click for me. I don't know what exactly happened. I played a little bit of it and I just wasn't really that interested. So I put it down for a while. And then later on, I think my friend Matt got more and more into it. And I think he was even interested in being a member potentially. So he started playing more and more. And so I got kind of jealous and we got a few of our other friends involved at our lunch table back in the day in middle school. We'd all sit at the same lunch table and we were kind of the nerds. We'd play video games. And so we all started playing and I think we kind of tried to pick a time, like whether it was like 5 o'clock p.m. to all kind of log on the same world and meet up and just kill cows at the time, which was the main thing to do when you're lower level. It was just really cool and it brings me back to kind of the heyday of early internet where I, I'm pretty sure at this time, like if I was logging on to RuneScape you pretty much couldn't do anything else on the internet at all. It was before a lot of these Wi-Fi devices and Bluetooth and all that. So, like, I remember my parents would always complain that I was, you know, using the internet. Like, they wanted to use the computer. We only had one computer. And back in the day, I had another friend, Casey, who was on the same bus as me. And I remember he used to, like, call my house. And this was, like, before my parents got back from work. And they, he'd be like, oh, get on. Let's go get some cows. So we would log on and fight some cows and all that. And it was really fun. Like I said, it was the first kind of like social interacting with video gaming that I had. And I've always liked fantasy related things. So it was pretty cool to, you know, craft your own armor. RuneScape's a game for anyone who's not aware where you pretty much have to do every aspect of the game. Like you have to make your own armor, if not buy it. But you have to have money, you have to like make your runes for magic or buy runes for magic. There's a lot of different things. You can build a house. There, there's so many different skills. I think there's like 30 something skills at the moment and it gets more and more over time. But it was just cool to have like so much control of, you know, your role playing experience. And that's something else too that me and my friends, especially when we were younger in middle school, picking up this game, like we really kind of role played, not super hardcore, but just we'd be like, oh, it would be really cool if we did this thing together and we could pretend we're like, you know, these knights and go out and kill giant spiders or like whatever. It just depended on what we were trying to do. Um, we were trying to make little like groups where we had like one mage and one soldier kind of knight and one ranger and team up and they have PvP elements in RuneScape, so that was my first kind of experience with that as well. You could go in the wilderness area, which meant that any player could come up and attack you. So me and my friends were always like kind of coming up with strategies in order to be able to defeat other players and get good rewards. So those are pretty much my earliest memories with the game, but 
I think what kept me coming back for more, and at least in the beginning, was the the diversity of things to do. Like I said, there were so many different skills. You were starting at you know level one in every skill. It, it isn't like today where if if you go on RuneScape today, there are so many guides and plugins and different things that you can put to kind of help yourself get through this experience. But back in the day, it was pretty bare bones. People didn't really have any information about the game. I think originally people would start making books and stuff to try to figure out how to get a lot of gold, but it was pretty much DIY and that's what was really cool about it. It had its own ecosystem and its own environment of getting stuff done. So you had to talk to your friends at school and learn about different new things or maybe a new thing to try to sell to get money to get armor and all that different stuff. So there was a lot of exploration and even the quests back in the day, you know, they were pretty difficult. <laughs> Jagex is the the company that makes RuneScape and the quests are pretty hard. Some of them, the earlier ones are pretty straightforward. The NPC will tell you kind of what you need to get and then you just got to get the item and then bring it to somebody else. Kind of fetch quest style, but there's some later on that get pretty complicated so I remember struggling through a lot of the quests with my friends always getting lost and frustrated I was never a big quester but you know at that time the coolest thing was like trying to get dragon armor and rune armor so at the time you know to get rune armor and be able to hold and wear most of the rune stuff you had to do Dragon Slayer, which was a quest. And in order to unlock Dragon Slayer, you had to do a lot of other quests. So pretty much everybody had to do the free-to-play earlier uh, quests in the game. And I remember that was a grind, and I remember dying a few times on the dragon because I forgot to bring the shield that protects you from its fireballs. But eventually I got it, and I was so hyped. I would go around and show off. And that was kind of another thing is the first time at least I realize when people want to flex on other people and especially in a digital environment like wanted to show off my rune armor so when somebody would see me in the game they'd be like oh well this guy beat dragon slayer so he's pretty cool stuff like that so that that's interesting and then you know as you start playing this game you realize that there's this whole economy within the game and you know thinking back on this whole experience I really realized that I think a lot of my business related interests might kind of spur back to runescape because back with the older version of runescape not the old old runescape but old school what they call old school now which wasn't the original it was kind of like runescape 2 if you will i was too young for the original runescape but runescape 2 was where i found myself and at that time there was all different stuff you could do you could type in these short commands and make your text different colors and move and that was such a cool thing and people would use that to their advantage to like sell goods and I remember everyone would always group up at the different banks and try to sell stuff and that was the way that the economy worked so like if you had something that was more rare you know you could charge more and along with all that stuff there was always people scamming so the biggest scam from back in the day was people would try to trick you and tell you they would trim your armor which was very rare sought after items gold trimmed and different stuff like that types of armor but they were only available through uh kind of a random chance in a later game type activity um called i think treasure trails and so people would basically have you trade them the items and say oh we're going to trim it in gold for you and then just steal the items so eventually the game developers would put in some features that would tell you if you're about to get ripped off and advise you to not, you know, make deals with people. But it definitely relates to real business, right? It's like you make these relationships with people. Maybe you know a seller and you get a good deal, but you have to look out for scams. You know, you might want to lend stuff to your friends, but not to people you don't know. I think all these kind of intro level basic business tactics I pretty much learned from RuneScape and I think it really got me interested in having kind of an entrepreneurial brain and in, in trying to make extra money and stuff like that so I think that's pretty cool to look back on and then I feel like the next chapter of RuneScape for me was I kind of fell off for a little bit and then my friends that I got into the game with were pretty much all getting membership at that point we kind of 
did most of what we wanted to do with the free skills. So again, for people who might not be interested, there are some skills in the game that are free to play and quests that are free to play. But if you want to play the whole part of the game, you basically need to pay, I think at the time it was $5 a month for membership, they called it. And you would give access to all the skills, all the quests, and just special items that only existed in the members uh, part of the game. And there were specific worlds that were also exclusive to members only. So as my friends started doing that, I got really jealous because I started falling behind essentially. And at the time, my parents were not interested in letting me pay for something online. It was still early internet days. And I remember getting so upset one time and just freaking out at my mom because I was trying to tell her how $5 a month was not that much. I would find a way to pay for it. I just really wanted it because I wanted to fit in with my friends. And again, thinking back on that kind of experience is interesting because you realize how much as a kid you have like social pressures and just wanting to bond with your friends in a specific way that may be related to money. But I think for the amount of money that it really cost, it was worth it. And eventually I did convince my mom in order to give me a membership. And, uh, but the other thing about it was that some of my friends were able to play on the computer for a long time. And at this time, my parents had a rule about only really being able to go on the internet for about an hour a day or so. So I was always struggling to keep up with my friends in RuneScape and also, you know, get the value out of my membership at only being one hour per day. And then, you know, as maybe a year goes by or so, eventually I stopped playing RuneScape altogether. I wasn't a member anymore. I didn't feel like doing any of the non-member things. So it just kind of fell off. And then I think maybe having a year or two off, um, me and my friend Matt again kind of picked it up again got more into it in early high school, but kind of just fell off the game. Um, got really into playing other online games, like I ended up getting an Xbox 360 and Halo 3, and then I got consumed by that, started paying for Xbox Live and things like that. So RuneScape really fell to the wayside. You know, I was a kid, I didn't have money. I couldn't pay for RuneScape membership and Xbox Live and the video games I wanted. So ultimately put it down for a while. Now, I don't think I picked RuneScape back up until I think maybe my first year of college, which at this time, I think the reason I was interested in picking it back up was because RuneScape 3 was kind of first starting to be introduced, which is basically a graphically updated version of the game um, and just adding a lot more features. Um, and I think at first I played it for like a month or two and really got put off by it because it felt like they were trying to make it better, but they were complicating a lot of things. I remember there was like a lot of menus and text boxes trying to teach you the new style of combat that they introduced and all this different stuff. So I got a little bit frustrated by that. Um, but actually, now that I think about it, one thing I wanted to touch on too was Back when I was playing in middle school and things like that with my friends, you know, I had friends at my high school that I was playing with, but there was also a friend I had named Derek, and he was somebody I was friends with, and then he moved away, but he played RuneScape. So it was the first time I had an experience of being able to communicate, first of all, through messages and interact in a digital space with a friend who was geographically far away from me. He was living in I think it was Michigan and then he moved to um, New Jersey and I was living in New York. So that was a really cool thing and I think that's something that people take a lot for granted these days due to all these video chats and messaging systems. But at the time, you know, games were a really good way of keeping in touch with people. So now for the next part of the discussion, like I said, I started picking up RuneScape 3 slowly, but, but the really interesting thing here, I think, is as my experiences with RuneScape start to change as I get older, right? In the beginning, I was so much into the game for the social aspect and, you know, camaraderie with my friends, but as I started going into university and got busier and started having a lot of more things on my mind, interacting more in social life, 
and less on online. I think RuneScape started to be kind of a way of me coping with stress. And as the years go on, I think it helped even more. And I think I'm finally starting to understand why that is. So the way I look at it is like this. RuneScape is a game, a lot of people call it grindy. And they call it grindy because there's so many different skills. Everything you do needs money. So you need to constantly be grinding for money. And that creates an environment where, you know, you're just constantly doing things. You need to optimize things as much as possible. But for me, in my life, especially if I'm having a more difficult time or maybe I want to do a bunch of different things at the same time, I started multitasking a lot in college. So RuneScape was a game for me where I could sit there and watch TV on one screen and on the second screen I could play RuneScape. And it's not a game where I would miss story elements or anything like that. It was just something you could kind of passively sit and grind. Like if you're woodcutting or something like that, there's really not much to do but sit and click, 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 go back to the bank, click, 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 click. So RuneScape became this go-to game for me when I was doing other things. And like I said, once I hit a certain point in my life when I started to get really stressed and felt like I lost control of things that were important to me, RuneScape was always something I would come back to because I have nostalgia for it, I have a history with it, I have a character that's, you know, constantly progressing, and it's almost like in my life it was a constant. I could go back, level up my character, get more money, get better things, and I felt like, like I said, I had control. I was improving in some element of my life. And I, I think that the game is very valuable for that specific reason. It's always going to be there until eventually they shut it down, but for my life, like, I think we're almost looking at probably 20 years of me playing, and I do every once in a while come back for it. Um, for this podcast, if you want to watch the video version, I'm basically just going to play for a few hours and use the video of that and just overlay it with me talking about the game so you can kind of see if you're not familiar and just kind of bring back people's memories for the game. But I, I still do feel like it's an interesting game and as time has gone on as well, I think they've really tried to kind of adapt the game to match a lot of the other popular things that were happening you know, through the World of Warcraft time and the, I want to say, like, boom of MMORPGs. They really tried to make it similar by making, like, raid-like things, um, big bosses, you know, super rare drops that go for a lot of money and different things like that. Um, because they were just kind of trying to fit in. And the thing about RuneScape is that I think the appeal of it in the beginning was that it was different. You know, the graphics weren't amazing, but it reminded me of, like, a retro video game where you don't play it necessarily because of the graphics. You play it because of the content and the way it makes you feel and how you feel uh, playing it. And I guess that's a good transition into the music of the game. I remember back in the day when we were first logging on, my parents' internet was not great, and you'd always see that login screen where you had to type in your username and password, you had the torches on the side, you had the super epic RuneScape music playing, and I remember I would like try to log in and it would kick me out, and then you'd try to log in and it would kick you out, and so you'd be listening to the RuneScape soundtrack, and that is a game where there's so many tracks in the game, and every tiny area or quest has different sounds, different music, um, they even released a vinyl record of it in the last like 10 years or so, I've been meaning to pick it up, the fan base is rampant with soundtracks. There's a Vaporwave version of the RuneScape songs that's really nostalgic for me, but just creates a great environment, and I'm really, really fond of it. And another thing I kind of forgot to mention as well is, you know, earlier days of the game, there was a lot of camaraderie and people bartering and exchanging ideas on how to make gold in the game because... Like I said, so much of the game was dependent on how much gold you had and every skill, pretty much you had to waste 
ton of gold besides melee skills in order to level it up. So it was pretty much the key to survive. And at a certain point, they introduced this place called the Grand Exchange, which you could essentially pretty much buy or sell any item in the game. And this really changed the way that RuneScape functioned. Because in the beginning, the things that were harder to do or rare, different things like that, always had the highest prices associated with them. But then when they kind of created this like almost like stock market global exchange, the dynamics of the prices of certain items can fluctuate a lot more. You didn't have to go through the manual labor of typing in a bank trying to sell things. Um, and that was another thing that I think really piqued my interest in business as well. Kind of understanding that having more people connected creates better business and also opens up a lot of opportunities. People started selling really random items that were even available in shops because people were just too lazy to go walk in the game and get it. And it was really, really interesting. And I do think that that was a really, really pivotal point in the game. And now I should mention as well that in RuneScape, people got so nostalgic for the era when I first joined the game when I was in middle school. And they actually took RuneScape 2 and turned it into RuneScape Classic. And back in the day, you used to be able to have to be a member, I think, and you would make a RuneScape Classic account. Or sorry, RuneScape Classic was RuneScape 1. Old school RuneScape is RuneScape 2. You used to be able to play Classic way back in the day with membership. Then it was old school RuneScape. And there's a lot of people out there who they only want to play this version of the game because they think they have the almost like elitist attitude that this was the peak RuneScape time and they want to experience everything like the way it was. Um, and then over time, RuneScape 3 has just been getting more and more updates and RuneScape 2 is kind of this period in time. But even at a certain point, RuneScape, old school RuneScape started being expanded on as well for quality of life changes. But it's kind of interesting. They still have these two versions of the game to this day, and they're both being updated. But I think um, old school gets updated less frequently than RuneScape 3. But there, there seriously is a lot of diversity here. And if you've ever found yourself looking for something in life that can bring you out of a rough time and even you just want to focus like maybe you're a big rpg person you're not a big mmo person like you can totally play this game by yourself there's so many hours involved there's so many different skills you'll find something you like if you're interested in economics and video games and you want to deep dive into something and try to make a ton of money off selling lobsters like you can do that like I do feel like RuneScape is a bit underappreciated because of its graphics and because of kind of this meme culture online that likes to make fun of um, some of the original RuneScape stuff. Like if you go look online for like the gnome meme related to the RuneScape gnomes and there's so much different stuff, but I think it is really fun and worth your time if you've never given it a try. Another thing I just remembered too was Oh man, back in the day. So what would keep me coming back to RuneScape 2 is every time there was a holiday, like Easter, Christmas, Halloween were the main ones. Um, RuneScape would have these updates and they'd have these exclusive items that you could only get through holidays. And a lot of the really early on ones that they made, like the Santa hat, the party hat, they were tradable. So they'd become really, really valuable because everyone would want them and you could only get them for a short amount of time so there'd be limited amounts of them which eventually they changed that but i remember logging on for like even if i wasn't interested in runescape anymore going out on halloween getting the exclusive items getting the exclusive emotes and that was just such a fun thing too and then going around and showing it off again part of the digital identity the digital flex just such a cool thing in a vacuum and i think those events kind of got a little bit overrated with time but man there was such a heyday for them in kind of you know the mid to late 2000s that were just i don't know really legendary so i think that's pretty much it for this episode guys i'm gonna do a series of these videos where i kind of talk about games that i like a lot 
and give a retrospective. So if you guys like these kind of videos, be sure to leave a response on the comment section or leave me a review. Um, podcasts on Spotify now can be reviewed from mobile. Be sure to leave a review there, uh, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, whatever you listen to this podcast on, and uh, we'll see you on the next episode. I'm thinking it might be something related to RPGs, so if you're interested in RPGs, uh, check it out. And until next time, guys, peace out.